Welcome to Baggins Book Summaries. In this episode, we'll be exploring the exciting and suspenseful world of J.R.R. Tolkien's classic novel, The Hobbit. At the end of Chapter 6, the Lord of the Eagles' rescue marked a turning point for their journey, and the group felt grateful for the support they received from the powerful bird species. Bilbo's journey was far from over, and he was excited for what has yet to come. Chapter 7 begins with the group ready to find their way back to the route that will lead them to the Lonely Mountain. If you enjoy these summaries, please hit all the normal YouTube buttons and let us know how we're doing in the comment section below. Join us as we leave the Misty Mountains and meet both friends and challenges on our way to confront Smaug. Bilbo awoke with a start, realizing he was far from his cozy hobbit hole. He ate a meager breakfast before taking flight on the back of an eagle with the dwarves. They landed on a hill of stone, and Gandalf informed them that they had veered off course. But fear not, for he knew of someone who lived nearby and suggested they seek him out. Gandalf revealed that he had pressing matters to attend to, yet he promised to lend his aid for a day or two. The dwarves offered him gold and jewels, but the wise wizard refused. After bathing in the river and drying off in the warm sun, the group crossed the ford and began their march through the lush grass and trees. Bilbo inquired why the place was called the Carrick, and Gandalf recounted the story of Beorn, a great person who lived nearby and possessed the ability to transform into a black bear or a strong man with a beard. Beorn lived in an oak wood with his cattle, horses, and bees. Gandalf warned that the group be polite and steer clear of any mention of furriers, rugs, or capes as it would undoubtedly offend Beorn. While some believed Beorn was descended from ancient bears in the mountains, others believed he was one of the first men to settle in the area. Gandalf leaned towards the latter and shared a memory of seeing Beorn sitting alone on top of the Carrack, growling in the language of bears. As the group strolled through the countryside, they came upon patches of wildflowers and buzzing bees that were larger than Bilbo had ever seen. Gandalf led them through a hedge and into the bee pastures of Beorn, a towering man who was surrounded by sleek and well-groomed horses. Beorn demanded to know who they were and why they sought his company. Gandalf explained that they had lost their luggage, almost lost their way, and were in dire need of help. Beorn welcomed them inside to hear their story. Initially, Bjorn was suspicious of the group, but Gandalf assured him that they were enemies of goblins and up to no mischief in his lands. Gandalf began to recount their journey and how they were attacked by goblins while crossing the mountains. He told Bjorn of their refuge in a cave, getting captured by the goblins, and his killing of a few goblins before he slipped away unnoticed. As Gandalf spoke, more dwarves arrived until Bjorn was satisfied that he had met everyone. With Bjorn and his animals lighting torches and setting tables for a feast, they were joined by sheep carrying trays of food. The seating arrangements were low to accommodate the animals, and Bilbo found himself able to sit comfortably at the table. Bjorn shared tales of the dangers that lay ahead in the forest of Mirkwood, which the dwarves must navigate to reach the dragon stronghold. As they dined and drank mead, the night grew darker, and the dwarves began to tell their own tales. Bilbo nodded off to sleep and later awoke to find Bjorn gone, but the dwarves continued singing late into the night. In the wee hours of the night, Bilbo awoke to a flicker of white light from the moon and a growling sound outside the door, as if a great animal was scuffling around. He wondered if it could be Bjorn in an enchanted form, perhaps a bear that could come in and attack them. Terrified, Bilbo hid under his blankets and eventually fell back asleep despite his fears. Gandalf woke them all up in the morning and they had breakfast before leaving Bjorn's Hall and continuing on their journey. Bilbo wakes up in the morning to find Beaufort grumbling about him lying in the shadows. The dwarves inform him that they have been searching for Bjorn since morning, but he's nowhere to be found. They had found breakfast laid out for them when they went out. Just before the sun sets, Gandalf, the wizard and occasional disappearing act, returns to the group with news about Bjorn. He spent all day tracking bear tracks that led to the east side of the Misty Mountains. Bilbo, always anxious, worries aloud about the possibility of wargs and goblins in the area, but Gandalf waves off the notion as unlikely. Bilbo goes to bed, and when he wakes up in the middle of the night, he hears more strange noises. The next day, they are all woken up by Bjorn himself, 
who has been over by the river and up in the mountains in his bare form. He seems to be in a good mood and gets them all laughing with his funny stories. He tells them that he has been tracking the movements of the wargs and goblins and he knows that they are not coming in their direction. Their journey continues with the guidance of Bjorn, who advises them to take the secret path through the perilous Mirkwood. The group initially feels safe, but as they draw nearer, the land begins to slope up and a quiet unease descends upon them. The birds grow silent, the wildlife disappears. Finally, they reach the eaves of Mirkwood, a vast and eerie forest that lies before them. They must bid farewell to their trusty ponies and enter the foreboding wood on foot venturing ever closer to the dragon that awaits them at the end of their journey. In Chapter 7, Bilbo's journey has been full of unexpected twists and turns, and the encounter with Bjorn proves to be one of the most memorable experiences in his quest. From the stunning landscape to the exotic animals and looming dangers that lay ahead, the group's time with Bjorn is a moment of respite and reminder of the beauty and magic that exists in Middle-earth. With Bjorn's guidance, they venture into the foreboding Mirkwood Forest, taking the first steps towards the dragon stronghold. As the group moves ever closer to their goal, the tension and excitement continue to mount, leaving Bilbo and the readers wondering what other surprises lay ahead in this epic adventure. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Baggins Book Summaries. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and let us know what you think. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an episode. We have many more exciting adventures from Middle Earth to share with you, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode of Baggins Book Summaries. Until then, happy reading!